All right. So, John Mooney, thanks for coming on today. Um, if you could just talk um, briefly about who you are and kind of how that might relate to sleep, um, just from all of our uh, listeners and viewers, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. So, I am John Mooney. Uh, I am a Category 2 cyclist. Uh, I am two-time runner-up uh, in this state time trial, so second place twice. Uh, and uh, I know it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> it haunts me uh, in my dreams. Uh, and then uh, uh, I'm a new dad. I've got a like a five week old. You can probably hear him crying in the background. Um, and uh, so I don't get a lot of sleep these days, uh, but it's something that I consider very important. Um, I also work in the operating room. So it's a lot of early mornings. Um, usually I'm at the hospital you know, working and moving and making stuff happen at 6 a.m. So wow. starts starts pretty early. Uh, so obviously sleep is a pretty interesting thing to try and squeeze into all of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, and then I saw you pour coffee earlier. So I'm, I'm drinking, um, it's a Doma coffee. It's a Guatemalan. Um, this company is out in uh, Idaho, I think. Oh, yeah. Post Falls, Idaho. As I say, they're gonna get mad if I don't get that right. Um, but what, what are you drinking this morning? I am just drinking some Pete's. All right. Dark. So nothing fancy here. I was trying to get my hands on some Blue Sail, but they were closed by the time I made it over there. That's a local, local roastery. It's pretty, nice. pretty phenomenal. Uh, and and the owner's a cycling buddy of mine. So nice. All right. Well, cool. Let's let's talk about a little bit more of that. So what does what is a category two? cyclist mean sure so there's like uh there's essentially like six different levels right there's like pro category one category two three four five um and category one the only difference between you and like a pro is just your contract right um and so category two there's a point system so you have to have x number of wins or place high enough to get points to move up the ranking systems Okay. If that makes sense. And category two is probably the hardest to get out of because when you get to category two, you start racing with pros. Ah, okay. So, which is very different because I show up to these races and I have a full-time job. Now I have a kid, <laughs> like all of these things. And I'm like, cool, this guy's only job is to ride his bike, work out and sleep. And, <laughs> and so makes it tricky but it's definitely fun uh, uh it's always fun like you know rubbing shoulders and racing against people you know you read about or you know see on tv sometimes so yeah. that's cool yeah so so with that when you said you're the uh two-time runner-up was that like the pro was the person that finished first or how did that work <laughs> yeah, the, guy, the guy who beat me is like uh he's yeah he's an animal uh he uh he raced in europe for a couple of years and then came back stateside and he just happens to live in Arkansas. So <laughs> I, I have to race him. <laughs> nice, that guy. Sheesh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But with that, you, you are attempting to go pro as far as in the cycling circuits or, or what's um, in there? I'm not really sure. Uh, at, at this point, I'll probably, um, I may get domestic elite status at some point, um, which would be like kind of pro, uh, but I don't think I'll ever make it my full-time job at this point. Um, just because, you know, got, got kid now and married and, you know, living on couches isn't quite as uh, appealing as it used yeah. to be. Yeah, no doubt. Right. So, so let, let's talk a little bit about that with um, like balancing new dad job and then still yeah. training like, where does and, and we could talk a lot about a lot of different things there but as it relates to sleep um how has that been like fitting in how is that different than maybe uh your training and sleep schedule um before sure. um being a father and things like that yeah uh so let's see Jeez. um so before being a dad uh <laughs> it's like you know obviously sleep is like a huge a huge part of recovery, um, which is kind of the name of the game when it comes to cycling, right? Like 
you know, the reason, even with the drugs, right? Like the, the reason Lance Armstrong was so good and the reason the drugs made him so good is because he could train that much more and be recovered that much faster. Mm-hmm. And then like, you're like me and you're not going to take drugs, then you have to figure out all these other ways to like recover faster. And sleep is definitely one of the biggest parts of that. Um, you know, so with work and stuff, starting early, like that's an earlier bedtime. Um, I am I never get eight hours, which is obviously like the golden number. Um, but, you know, obviously the closer you can get to that, the better. Um, and then I'm a big nap guy. So I usually try and squeeze in one if I can during lunch. Uh, even if it's just like, you know, if I'm traveling to different hospitals, even if it's just going to my car and taking a quick 30 minute nap, you know, just something. All right. Um, with that, have you, all right, I've heard of like binaural, binaural beats, I think is what it is. Like, um, and it's supposed to just be like a, um, almost like a white noise type deal and help out with naps. Um, yep. just, like get into like this different, um, different, wave state essentially uh have you experimented with those at all as far as like no, I, I haven't i definitely use white noise a lot um just because you know, i'm noise wise i'm a pretty sensitive sleeper um and so i definitely use white noise a lot but i haven't tried anything with waves or anything like that gotcha. hmm. I'm curious um yeah right. no, that's interesting. yeah i, I haven't experimented with them i'm just uh just kind of heard um, Aubrey Marcus, the uh, CEO of, of On It, um, talks a lot about him in his podcast and then um, in his book, um, On the Day on Your Life. And so, I don't know, just kind of cool. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. So, like, have you noticed, and, and I don't know the difference. I'm, I'm, I like biking, um, but I'm not a, I wouldn't consider myself a cyclist by any stretch of the word. Um, but have you noticed a difference as far as, like, training uh, and then the sleep versus if you're actually getting out on the road, um, like during competition season or whenever that might be, and then sleep or any differences there. And I know it's kind of hard to say because those two might not have coincided with, uh, you know, your new sleep schedule. But. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, sleep's a, a huge part of these races and stuff because a lot of them are really multi-day. Some of them are one day. Okay. Um, but for instance, like, uh, there's a large race in Northwest Arkansas called Joe Martin, uh, Memorial stage race, it's an impossibly long name. And, uh, they, they, uh, and that's a four day event or five, mm-hmm. five day event. So you race every day and then there's different stages and there's a lot to it, but a huge part of that is like, you'll do a 90 mile road race one day. And then the next day we had a hundred and 17 mile race so it's like you do this huge race and you're just completely gassed because you race every day like it's the only race and then you get up the next day and you've got like another huge race and then the next day you've got another huge, you know and so it's just like the snowball effect and so it's you know you try and do everything you can to maximize you know you do your stretching you drink plenty of water or, you know you foam roll you you know sleep as much as possible and you're not a lot, not a lot of fun in between the races because you're just like sitting around with your feet up trying to sleep or yeah. recover, you know. Um, so in those kind of events, sleep's everything. Um, so you you tend to get, a, I tend to get a pretty good bit of sleep, at, you know, at those events, and then uh, and then you know, in training and stuff, there's a lot more, you know, you're at home. There's all these life distractions, and so I'd say I'm like I get less sleep at home than I do at the events. Oh wow, I guess with events like you can prioritize sleep that it's as soon as you're done with the mileage that day you know do like you said stretching foam roll hydrate you know fuel yourself whatever it might be and then just sleep as much as you can um how does that look kind of day in the life training and and everything like what is do you have consistent wake up time um you know do you like have a certain like sleep routine or anything mm-hmm. like that getting prepared for bed and, and how does that look? Yeah. Um, I'm not the best at routines. Um, usually, um, let's see, 
depending on the night at home, wake up time is pretty consistent. Um, usually waking up right around five, five, five thirty, somewhere in there. Um, and then, you know, grab coffee, you know, quick breakfast out the door. Um, and then as far as sleep, bedtime routines, I don't really, other than like, you know, taking a shower, brushing my teeth, like that kind of stuff. I don't really have too much. I try to do a little bit of stretching, um, every night. Um, and then that's about it. I walk the dog, which is usually kind of a little relaxing, like wind down the evening. Um, sometimes I'll do like the little sleepy time teas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I like those, but other than that, I don't really have any nighttime routines. I need to get in, get into some. I think that's going to, I think that would be helpful. Yeah. Man, no, I, I think all the things that you said, like they're a good routine, whether, the, whether we think about them or not, um, that taking like a hot shower, like elevates your, your body temperature. And then when you get out of the shower, you can kind of cool off. And a lot of times that, um, kind of cooling off or being a little bit more cold, uh, helps people get to sleep faster. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I like tea at night. I don't do it, you know, nearly as en- enough. Um, but for me, I don't know what it is, but I, I like all the flavors of the teas that are caffeinated. And so it's just like, I can't, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, caffeine, right? it's like nonsense. so man all right and so with all that um how uh obviously there's other people in, in the picture so how is how is your how's your wife sleeping how has that affected you and i, I know just waking up every night um uh, for uh for your son is is a lot different um compared to what it was before but um, how is, how is she maybe impacting your sleep or anything like that? Yeah. And she's, she's, she's been a trooper. She's been really great. About, uh, you know, we're not doing formula. So she's feeding him. So she's waking up at night and feeding him, which makes it obviously a lot easier on, on me. Um, uh, which I'm very appreciative of. Uh, but, uh, I mean, she's, she's a little slower to get into bed. She's a little bit more of a night owl than I am. Um, so that makes it a little tricky sometimes. Um, and then, uh, she's a little bit harder of a sleeper than I am as well. Um, that, uh, that maternal instinct <laughs> pop up and assist the baby cries hasn't, hadn't quite kicked in yet. Um, <laughs> so, but she's been great. She's been phenomenal on getting up and feeding the baby and taking care of him. And so sometimes I'll get up and change him, but for the most part, she really has been great about taking care of him. So that helps me sleep a lot um which i know is a luxury a lot of people don't have uh having a wife so patient but um for the most part she's real supportive about cycling and stuff so if i'm like i've got to get up early and go ride or work out or whatever um you know she'll she'll be encouraged and help me out there as well you know just either help make sure i'm up in time or you know nudging me towards bed when i need to go to sleep so nice Right on, right on. Well, um, well, hey, I'm I'm all out, uh, so I think that'll that'll do us. Um, but if if somebody wants to follow along with like your cycling career or things like that, how how might they be able to find you or, or, or kind of tag along or support? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, on Instagram, I'm try Johnny try still from the triathlon days, so just T R I Johnny T R I, um, and then uh, I race for a team called Velo V. Uh, and it's an elite team based out of the Southeast. They do a lot of cool stuff with junior development and just helping people get into the sport of cycling. Um, kind of gives everyone, it's a, it's a cool program because it helps people basically like, oh, I'm, I just got my bike on and start doing bike racing. And it gives you basically a platform to go all the way up to racing with the big dogs. So it's pretty cool. Um, so follow them, follow me, and I guess that'd be your two main sources. Nice. Right on. We'll we'll do. We'll, uh, John, I appreciate you. And um, we'll have to talk again soon. Yeah, sounds great.